how about some practical ways that Catholics can share the truth about the Eucharist, either with their fellow Catholics who, who maybe are at a different level in their, their understanding of the true presence or other Christians, you know, non-Catholics. Obviously, every conversation is a little different, but um, sure. what's, what are some practical ways we can do that? Sure. You know, I'm going to use Therese as an example. Um, she's a great friend and a great sister. Uh, you know, it's, it's amazing how a uh, 23- or 24-year-old nun in a Carmel in Lisieux became the patroness of missionaries, right? Someone who never left the four walls of her convent, someone who was actually unknown during her short time yeah. in this world. And it, was, it wasn't until she died that she became more fr- right. more effective. And so um, her biggest thing was, you know, uh, living uh, love in a radical, in those little ways, right? Her little way. Um, I believe in our time and age, certainly apologetics is very important, right? It's, it's essential to our faith to be able to expound on, on, on our, uh, the doctrines and tenets of our faith, to be able to explain it in a convicting way. That's very important. Um, but also, I, I do think that the, uh, uh, the way that you live your faith, the way you witness it, whether by words or by actions, I would say probably more by actions nowadays because there's a lot of words out there, no doubt. especially in the communications and social media world. And those those words can be so construed Yeah. where now I think uh, the principal means by which we can evangelize is just by our, our silent witness, the way that we love. They will know that we are Christians by the way that we love, right? And so the joy that we exude, uh, that fragrance, right? St. Therese was of the little flower. I, I use that because... Uh, the fragrance is something that uh, sticks to me and, and at least has become at least a, a modus operandi of how I try to live my faith as a priest um, to evangelize. Is, uh, I, I use this example because not by experience, but maybe, you know, uh, you know we have a kindred spirit because we're, all, we're, we're both men, right? Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, you know, there's two ways to get um, a, a teenage boy out of his room in, in the basement, right? Especially when in the basement... It's all dark. He has his headphones on. He's watching TV or playing video games for hours on end, right? We don't know. God knows what he's doing. So there's two ways to get a teenage boy out of, your, out of his room. You can go downstairs and pound on the door and say, hey, what the heck are you doing? Get out of here, yeah. right? Uh, and he'll get out, uh, but he'll, he'll be pretty angry about it. Yeah. Or, you know, as a parent, because I believe you're a you're, you're, you're father, right, Phil? Uh, as a parent, you know, you cook a nice meal, right? Let the, let the fragrance seep through the cracks, you know, he'll smell it for himself. He'll take off his earbuds. He'll turn off the TV. He'll get up, walk to the door, reach for the handle, open the door, walk up the stairs and says, hey, Mom, Dad, what are you cooking? Yeah. Right? And Mom, Dad would say, sit down and have dinner. Right? And I, I think that that's a more effective way of evangelizing, especially today in today's day and age. It's a longer process. It's more intentional. It takes yeah. more time. Uh, but I do think that's more effective. And so that fragrance of how, how we, we, we live our, our life uh, our, our struggle towards sanctity every day uh, will make a profound difference. That, that, that was the impetus and the genesis of every single movement that has transformed the world, especially in the Catholic context, from the, from the beginnings of the nascent church today. 